Hey guys, hello everyone. So I'm back again with uh, some answers from part B section. I have checked some of them, some of the answer key of it. So I couldn't solve all the questions. There were so many requests from part B. It was literally like uh, I have to solve complete part B. But yeah, I did the most number of questions or I would say the question or the question ID which was common among all your uh, like request. And you can say that the uh, question ID which was having most number of uh, requests. So those questions I have discussed in this video and I have solved them and uh, I'll tell you I found one which I think it should be challenged but yeah let's look upon it so let's start this video first question is question ID 83 now this question is says that what is the order of decreasing carbonyl stretching frequencies in the following species from A to D we have manganese complex osmium complex iridium complex and free CO and if you see all these species are isoelectronic in nature I guess so so now the correct option which is given to you in according to the answer key is 332 which is option number D and uh, that's what is exactly correct answer why because uh, I'll give you reference of this okay so free CO uh, I guess you all know the value for the stretching frequency of this this is 2143 centimeter inverse right that value we already know a manganese complex I'll give you reference from Ajay Kumar book so if you go to the Ajay Kumar book here you will find out uh, this is page number 28 and here you will find out that the manganese complex MnCO6 plus is having a carbonyl frequency of 2100. So that means it goes over here as 2100 centimeter inverse. Then uh, I also tried to find out through some research papers for osmium complexes and uh, the values which I actually found for the osmium complexes. I'll give you the reference of uh, the research uh, paper as well. So uh, the osmium complex I found at uh, 2190 centimeter inverse and the iridium complex I found at 2254 centimeter inverse okay. So that clearly makes the order like C is greatest then comes B then comes a D and then comes A which is actually the correct answer. So I can understand that uh, to solve this type of question is a headache why because you have uh, to remember the values but actually you don't have to remember values you just have to uh, like you just have to remember the value for manganese complex and that's what was making all the things different over here because manganese is getting lesser than your uh, free CO. We generally know that uh, on increasing the oxidation state oxidation state increases uh, in that case your CO frequency also increases right. So that other ones are following that order but this manganese complex was one of them. Yeah, and you can consider it as an exceptional case also. I'll show you a reference paper where this has been discussed. Yeah, so this is a reference paper, and here you can say IR and uh, IR spectroscopy and structure of manganese carbonyl cation MnCO N plus. And here you can see they have uh, like given in the introduction itself that charge induced reduction in the pi back bonding leads to decreased redshift of MnCO6 that comes around. 2106 centimeter inverse so that makes this question correct or you can say the answer key is actually correct for this question so nothing wrong in this okay so answer um, answer key is correct okay for this question fine so 83 sorted uh, so many requests were there for 83 i hope now you understood let's go to the next highly debated question that is question number 82 which says that the geometry around terillium in the symmetric trimeric species of TeO2F minus is now here the question is actually from a research paper okay it's not it's not a direct question it's not from your notes I, you cannot do it from the usual methods I guess you might be getting tetrahedral in that case uh, but uh, yeah I don't know how I solved in the exam I don't remember exactly but yeah if you apply a little bit of logic you will end up getting option C as correct but let me give you the reference over here okay so this is the reference uh, i'll give you the reference over here trimeric and ions of k t e o 2 f basically this t e o 2 f minus it is but because of potassium that charge is getting neutralized so here if you come in the result and discussion they have said that the coordination of the crystallographically independent terillium atoms by oxygen and fluorine atom is pseudo trigonal bipyramidal okay uh, you can read about all the things in the synthesis and crystal structure they have mentioned everything like how they have actually got through this particular crystal how this is formed all the other things are mentioned over here so the main uh, feature of the of the structure of KTEO2F is the presence of unprecedented trimeric anions that is TE3O6F33 minus 
in which the terrelium atoms is linked by oxygen atom forming a six membered puckered ring and then it says that the coordination of the crystallographic independent tellurium atom by the oxygen and fluorine atom is pseudo by pyramidal so that again makes uh, this option as correct although it's a pseudo bi pyramidal they should have mentioned pseudo bi pyramidal a pseudo trigonal bi pyramidal but fine uh, we are going to give a give it a like you know it's a correct option because references are telling it so here again your answer e is correct now i know many of you might be thinking ki the answer should be tetrahedral but yeah that's what in organic chemistry is all about it's all about exceptions it's all about new findings and uh, it's not your fault because if the question is asked from a research paper uh, it's not expected that everyone will be able to solve it right so it's not at all your fault okay if you are not able to get this question correct it's not your fault it's nothing like you have not studied or something your concepts are fine it's the only thing that the question is being uh, like it's being nitpicking they have done from research paper so yeah that we cannot do anything okay so first of all i'm re-recording this video especially this part of the video and i would like to thank vijay for uh, giving me a hint for this question okay yes i was wrong in this uh, earlier in the previous video that's why i deleted that and i'm re-uploading it with the correct solution because i don't want uh, to uh, you know to spread misinformation and so that any one of you go and challenge the question right so that's why i am re-recording this section of the video i'll attach and edit and i will again upload it so fine uh, this particular question is also correct actually uh, which says that uh, the question id is 123 it says that the energy of electron in the hydrogenic atom is minus 13.6 z square by n square electron volt where z is the atomic number and n is the principal quantum number neglecting the interelectronic uh, repulsion the energy of the first excited state of the helium atom is so to solve this particular question first of all uh, like thing which we were missing actually is helium atom okay and helium is in excited state right so that means he, you will be having electronic configuration of 1s1 and 2s1 right because two electrons are there in helium and uh, uh, because it's a helium atom it's not he plus okay the solution or uh, like the answer would have been option b if it would be he plus so i also miss uh, you know i just looked overlooked the question actually so i made mistake yeah that's what i said so in the previous video also i said that yes i might make mistake and yes here i made i admit that okay so yeah it's not he plus okay so this is helium atom that means we will be having two electrons one electron in 1s orbital and one electron is 2s orbital okay so we have to calculate the energy of both of them so uh, like the total energy so they are asking the energy of the first excited state uh, so yeah this is the first excited state which we have the just made so the energy is going to be the energy of 1s and plus energy of 2s so energy of 1s is going to be minus 13.6 and then z is uh, 2 right for helium atomic number is 2 so 2 square divided by 1 square and plus this will be minus 13.6 into z is again 2 square and divided by n value for this is again 2 so 2 square if you solve this so this 2 square and this 2 square is going to get cancelled out uh, here you will get minus 13.6 into 4 so that will be minus 54.4 and this one will remain minus 13.6 overall it will become minus 68.0 electron volt which is actually correct okay so yes option number a is the correct option which they have given in the answer key so yes this answer e is also correct okay is correct so thank you vijay for uh, giving uh, this hint so yeah this is about it and yeah let us talk about that how exactly you can challenge the uh, question what are the things which are needed to be challenged in order to challenge a question uh, in order to challenge a question uh, either you should have a reference from a book uh, a known book or you should have a reference from a research article okay or you should be having reference of a reliable data sheet like uh, some periodic table is there or some molecular mass or uh, mag uh, like melting point boiling points these values are already like are noted or these are already reported values so if you have some of those reliable data so that is also accepted as a as a reference uh, notes are not going to be considered okay your notes are not your uh, that those are not a reference so if you will like uh, send uh, reference as your notes because your notes 
the, the genuinity of your notes or how much they are correct nobody is going to measure that right so they are not going to consider that as a reference so much for watching for this and please share this video so that others also get to know about it subscribe the channel so that if the next video comes you get notification about it like the video if you like it thank you so much i'll see you in the next one till then have a great day bye bye take care hey guys so i teach live on an academy plus platform here i teach for the csi or ugc net category and you can follow me over here for regular classes you can access my free classes as well as my paid classes on this particular platform the classes which are free you can get that under the section of special classes whereas in order to access my paid classes paid live classes we have to take an academy plus subscription so do make sure that you take the an academy plus subscription to access all my paid classes which are quite organized the whole syllabus is being completed over there and the classes are quite regular over there so make sure that you take an academy plus subscription by using my referral code that is n underscore huda that's it for this thank you so much